Well, good day, everybody, and welcome to today's presentation, Lovely Labels with Paste and R. Thank you for coming today on this nice Tuesday. It's good to see you. And I'm Monica Wahi, and I'm a data scientist. As you can tell, I like R, SAS, and more. And so if you hang around me, you're going to learn about R, SAS, and more. Um, but today, we're going to focus on pasting. So I use our GUI. Some of you may use our studio if you're used to um, doing more web development. I'm an epidemiologist and biostatistician by training. So usually when I'm using R, I'm doing a, like a research analysis. And so it's sort of static, like I write a peer reviewed article. But either way, I need to make visualizations and you need to make visualizations. And so one of the things that can be difficult is when you're making a data visualization in R, uh, I'm using that term, like like basically a bar chart or, um, or a pie chart or time series graph, you know, maybe you're using ggplot too. Um, and you don't like your data labels. So, Maybe you don't want data labels all the time. I often do want data labels and I often do not like them. Um, in epidemiology and probably in a lot of fields, we often save codes. So like, um, like for instance, uh, we have FIPS codes for each of our states in the United States. And um, in like Florida, I think is 12. And um, so if I'm doing output and like I might want it to say Florida and not 12, but I also might want a label to say, like if I'm doing output about Florida, say state equals FL, FIPS equals 12. Like I might want it to say this complicated label. So that's why I like paste command and R. Now you're probably like going, well, that just sounds like you're concatenating things. Yes, it is a basic concatenation. It's a basic way to assemble a vector. In R, we have these vectors, right? And you can assemble a vector. You can put characters in it. You can put um, numbers in it. You can put values, like you can call up values and put them in there. You can put variables. But basically, it's a way of concatenating a vector. But what I care about is this whole labeling your plot, right? So um, so that's, so the little picture is I'm going to teach you how to use uh, use paste command and R for just making vectors, making them say what you want. But what I'm going to do is teach you the fancy footwork, the bigger picture behind how you can use it in data analytics and specifically data visualization. But before I go on, I want to invite you to my free online workshop, which is taking place um, Saturday, November 18th and Sunday, November 19th. And it's on Zoom. So you can attend from the comfort of your own home or office or wherever it's comfortable for you. Some people are in their cars, I think. But anyway, you're welcome. It's free. Um, it's six plus hours. Basically, half of it is on Saturday and half of it's on Sunday. There's two group sessions. And what's the topic? The topic is application basics. So it follows this course, online course I have, which is a core course in my data science group mentoring program, my online group mentoring program, which you can join if you're interested in doing that and making portfolio projects. But if you just want to learn about applications and come and network, sign up for my free um, workshop. Uh, and this is the first time I'm holding it on the weekend. So I expect there to be a lot of people there because a lot of people work during the week and then the weekend hours might be better. Also, you should already have a link to download these slides, which you'll want to do because um, they have links in them. But look in the chat for the link to sign up for the workshop. Um, so again, what the workshop is about is application basics. So how applications are built who builds them, how they're designed. Now, some data scientists already know all this because maybe they learned data science from taking a business background. They have a business background or they have um, more of a computer programming background. If you're in healthcare or biostatistics like me, we don't really get trained in how applications are designed and built. And one thing we're not taught about is application pipelines. And right now, 
there are a lot of analytics platforms that you can put into your application pipeline, like R, <laughs> like SAS, like, you know, SAS via especially. So if you want to talk about those things, like integrating application pipelines and get um, knowledge of application basics, please come to our free workshop and I guarantee you, you'll have a good time. Um, all right. Thank you for that moment. And we will return to the regularly scheduled program, which is about um, paste and R. Okay. So see these resources here? There's, uh, I've got videos demonstrating and I got code you can download there. But I'm going to just uh, reiterate why the paste command is so useful in R. So the paste command is the main way you concatenate text together. And you can put numbers together. You can put anything together, but it's the main way you do that. So um, like in SAS, I think it's substring or string or something. This is uh, paste. So you need it to create labels. So um, a formatted label could be used in like a printed in a header of a report. Like so, you know, like I was saying, like report number, blah, date of report, blah. Like you can assemble that whole header using paste and the values and stuff and then place it there and also like i was describing it you could place it on a plot you know to label things so um and it, you can use all kinds of input um to create this label which can be saved as a vector or even as a variable in a data frame and i'm going to show you that right now so now we'll enough talk and we'll go back go over to um r okay here we are in r so if you go to that blog post, you'll find there's this simple code here. Let me just um, first go over what's going on in this code. So I first started with a really simple case. And the simple case is where I'm entering all of the arguments of the paste and I'm hard coding it, right? So I thought of like a phone number. Where I grew up in Minneapolis, we had this area code 612. So I thought of a phone number like 612 comma. So this is three numbers here. 781 comma. And then 8888. I just made this up. So this is like, let's say you have three numbers here. And you want to just put them all together. Like you wanted to say 612, 781, 8888, like all together. And that and be in a vector. What you'd probably want to do is put this paste command and then put this and then put a close parenthesis, but you can't do it because you have to set the sep. So see sep here? That stands for separator. Now, remember how I just said I wanted to say 612-781-888 and just be mushed together? Well, you have to set a separator. So how you do that is you just say equals, and these are just, um, quotes right next to each other like there's nothing in between them which is your secret code to r that just says don't separate it with anything okay now if i just run this code and i'm going to just do control r to the console you see what the value is see i told you that was going to happen right but we want to save this like in a an object so we can save it in a vector here so we're going to save in this vector called phone number here so um so control R. Okay, so now we have this vector called phone number. So I, I can run phone number and you know what it looks like. It's going to look like that. Um, and, and the class, so what is this? I, I told you it was a vector, but we can look at it. And see, this is a this is actually a character vector, right? Um, all right, so the purpose of this demonstration, which is just to show you how to, how to actually use paste. But now we're going to get a little fancy, okay? So what are we going to do with this next one? Well, we're going to make two changes. One is we're going to make one of the arguments actually be letters. I just made up TV, TV. I, I don't know why I did that. But um, and she'll, you'll notice when it's letters, you have to put quotes around it. Okay. The other thing we're going to do is change the set. We're actually going to make that be a dash. So now what we expect is this is going to say 612781 TV, TV. And it's gonna have dashes in between. Okay, so so let's well, we we can run to the screen, and then good, it came out the way we thought, and then we can run it like here, and it's called phone number with dashes, and we can look at it and there. Okay, so imagine you assembled some sort of 
um, uh, vector, like phone numbers with dashes. And it, you wanted to put that on everything. Like you wanted to put that as a he he on the header, you know, you could do that. You know, it's nice because now you have this whole thing assembled. But what's really cool about it is when you put values of variables in it. So what I did was I created a fake data set here called line items. I don't even really like this data set, but it was easy. So create it. So I'm going to read it in and you can get it on that um, blog here. So I'm going to read in this data set. So let me just show you what is in line item. It's not even a real data set, but it's just to mimic. Remember the Northwinds data set? Those of you who are old like me, you know, that was a, a demonstration data set that was handed out with like, Microsoft Access. Well, there was a table and it looked a little like this. It it had line items from like a, like a reports or something. So you know, here we have line item ID, report ID, report order, cost row ID, and you've got these costs over here. Okay, so this is a data set. Okay, it's a data frame. Well. One thing you might want to know about this data frame is what is the maximum in the total cost, okay? And if you did that, this is how you run it. You say max, and then line items, that's the um, name of the data frame, and then underscore, then total cost. So let's just run this to see what the maximum is. Oh, it's $293.88. Now, this is where the power of paste comes in. Let's say that you were running reports. OK, and you wanted to put this maximum cost in the report header or like a report label. So see how I made this paste here? It says paste. And then the first argument is the maximum total cost is and then there's a space and there's this um, comma here. And then I just literally put in max um, line items total cost you know, this thing here. And then I put exclamation points and then the SEP is nothing, right? So now, now that we have this data set in here, we can do this, okay? So I'm gonna run it and create report label and then let's go look at report label. I got this in the way now. So you see here now the, so you can see what's cool about that. But then there's other cool stuff you can do. Like you can just prepare labels and put them in another column. Like this is called line items, right? So let's say I go line items, um, new label, I'm just making this up, okay? So I'm imagining I wanna maybe make a label for um, that might go on like a scatter plot or something that I was gonna say. So maybe I do paste, um, and I'd first want to say, like, maybe I want to say the report it's in. So I'd say um, report number, comma, and then see, this is like, a, see this report ID? Oh, I could do that. Okay, so, comma, um, and then I'd say line items report ID. Right. So that should say that like right mushed up against this thing. And then we'll say um, comma and then cost, we could say, right. And then we could put this line items to cost, right. And we just put whatever the cost was. Okay. Oh, I better... um. See how confusing this gets? Let's see here. So this is kind of, let's see. And then line items, toe cost. Okay, and then we can't forget SEP, right? Is nothing. Let's see if this works. Okay. okay, it looked like it works. So let's go look at just this field that I just made. So this is what it says. Like here's report 26 cost is this report 27 and let me actually show you the whole data set just kind of actually i'll just show you the top of it i'll say line items um and i'll go like like the top five rows i think this is how you can do that 
Oh, no, this is uh, number five. <laughs> Row five. I got to do like this. One through five. So you see these top five rows here? Here's the report ID. It's one, two, three, three. And here's the total cost. And you see here how I've um, put them together into this label. Now, what the idea is, is I've actually saved this as a new label. So I could go and make a plot and refer to that as the label. But what can get kind of hairy is that, like, let's say I want this to be sorted in the order of report ID. I can't really sort it in this, like, things get goofy here. So you end up having to sort it by an actual um of uh, value that you're probably graphing. And, you know, things like fill, like if you want to fill it in ggplot, you've got to actually re refer to these original um, uh, values in here. But the label is what you can choose to just report. Like this is what you can sh choose that shows up on there. And, um, and I'm sorry, I'm not getting more deep into how that is. But uh, I, I did, I can go back and give you an example here because I found one on the web. It's actually kind of hard to find them. So this is an example just from um, this, uh, this um, R charts. So what's going on here is this person was um, doing this tree plot and they had, um, like it's they wanted it to say this is group nine with 41 people in it group three with 50 people in it or whatever but they didn't actually have this this label assembled in their data like i just did so instead of doing what i just did they called it on the fly so here's their gg plot so here's their label see this paste so group must be this group here like group nine right like that they must have a column like where it says group three group nine already and then value is 41 right and then the step is equal i don't know if you can see that but in quotes there's a backslash and then an n and those of you who use r a lot will know that that means like an a uh, carriage return so basically group nine and 41 are separated by an enter, which is why it's on the next. And I, I've never seen that before. But you'll you won't probably find me calling a label, a paste label like this in a GG plot, like like calling paste in here. What I'll do is I'll assemble a plot data set beforehand and create the label field. Why? Because I just want to make sure it looks the way I want. And also I can be picky. I can change it, you know, um, like if I want one of them to be to have it say baseline or comparison or whatever, I can just modify that row. Um, generally in ggplot and R um, and base R, but I generally use ggplot and R for plotting. I always make a plot data frame. I always assemble a plot data frame just to serve the plot. If you're used to using SAS, that's a new concept for you. And so it was a new concept for me when I got to ggplot. You know, in SAS, they'll, like, for instance, um, you know, like in SAS, we're used to putting, like, life table is a great example. You wanted to get a Kaplan-Meier, you put that in, and it just takes forever for that life table to run if you're using PC SAS. And these, the kind of data that, maybe life table is not a good example, you know, like proc univariate, we, you give you give um, SAS uh, variable, like a continuous variable, and it does proc univariate, does your, your moments and your summary statistics, and then it gives you a box plot. Whereas in, um, in R, you can do a lot less, like you can just ask for the box plot. You know, like R is just much more lean, and sometimes, and, and when you're graphing, you're really only graphing the summary statistics. And so you can assemble them beforehand. Like for example, if you want to put error bars on a plot, you can just calculate what the error bars are for your plot data frame. You know, I even have a, a 
a pl- uh, blog post on how to do put error bars. Um, it's like a a, a a line in your ggplot to code. And so I always have the error bars already calculated and as fields in the plot data frame, just like with labels. You don't have to, you can do this, but that's my style because then that way I can make sure that um, I did it right. My, I see more people are here. Let me just remind all of you about my free workshop. Um, it's so, if you're interested in applications, like what I was just talking about, this paste in R. So why is that so important? Well, I'm always automating things. And so if you're going to try and automate things, like in, Daniel's here in the, um, chat so he knows he's always automating SAS. He's always making SAS reports, I guess. Because most, most people who are doing what you do, making SAS reports. And so when you automate R for reports, like you're going to have to use a lot of paste. And when you, um, and probably it's a good idea if you're going to automate um, plots that you do that. Well, what do I mean by automate that? Well, you got to do ETL, you got to figure out your display. You got to integrate an application pipeline. And so that's why that's the theme of my November workshop is integrating application pipelines. Like, let's say you do use paste because I taught it to you today. Um, where Where is it in your pipeline? What are you pasting? What are you trying to produce? Uh, you got a dashboard going on? Or are you, um, maybe you're delivering an online newsletter with an image in it. I mean, who knows, Right. So that's what that uh, our online workshop is about, is learning about applications, learning about linking them up, making application pipelines, what, the kind of things you have to think about um, when you do that, especially for analytics, right? Because if you're a data scientist and you're sitting around on an application pipeline, you're probably wanting to analyze the data coming through the pipeline. So how do we set that up and make that work, right? Because that's probably your job, <laughs> usually is mine. So um, if you're available Saturday, November 18th and Sunday, November 19th um, for an online Zoom workshop on that topic, please um, sign up and uh, I put the link in the chat. You'll get access to um, this online course, Application Basics, which is part of the core courses for my online data science mentoring program, which if you're interested in that program, you make online portfolio projects. So I teach you about like, you know, basically how to present, how to do analytics and present your results. It's it's hard on one hand, but easy on the other. Like, the, like analytics itself is like, like survival analysis and stuff. It's super fun. But the whole issue of like, what are we doing and what are we, what problem are we trying to solve? And what are your recommendations after you did all this? That's actually hard, <laughs> right? That's like harder than survival analysis at the end of the day, right? You know, it's easier to explain your survival analysis than it is to explain a basic analysis about some complex thing that led you to make some decision. And so that's sort of what our, um, the whole mentoring program's about. But this course is a core course in it that teaches you um, about applications, because if you're going to solve these big problems, you got to understand sort of how applications are built. Um, after I learned all of this, and I learned it from colleagues, I learned it from working in IT departments where I felt very much a fish out of water. I didn't understand any of the terminology people were using. I, I didn't know what was going on, but luckily I didn't have any trouble telling people that I didn't know what was going on. And so um, I had really good mentoring and I was taught and uh, now I put all that into this course for you in this workshop. So hopefully you can show up and um, participate with us. Um, thank you very much for coming today. This is just a short little thing. Um, and uh, just to teach you about R, well, you can ask any questions. If you have questions about R, R, SAS, or more, you know, feel free to ask. Um, and you can always also, if you want a free consultation with me, you can always sign up for that. Just connect with me on LinkedIn and let me know that you want one and I'll give you a link you can sign up. Um, but please uh, keep in mind that I'm going to, do these uh, Tuesday lectures and I record them. So hopefully maybe you're watching this recording, you know, maybe you can uh, 
uh, sign up or come to register for the other ones. I'm trying to cover different topics that people are asking me questions about when they meet me. Um, and so, uh, so thank you. I'm seeing some thank yous here. Thank you for coming. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And I also hope that you sign up for our workshop and I get to see you again. Have a good week. Thank you for watching this video, which is part of the Public Health to Data Science Rebrand Program. If you are interested in joining the program, please sign up for a 30-minute Zoom interview using the link in the description.